Hello, my filthy, stinking students. I hope you're doing well. Tonight, it's in the even time. I'm being quarantined, so I must help you from the safety of my underground bunker. So, here we go. We're going to do work the algebra level midterm review. Now, I'm going to work the left side here. Uh, because I have the right side already solved. Um, so if you're in my class, you can use that. And even if you're not in my class, you can still use it. I have a copy of it, and I gave it to all the other teachers. So um, if you're going to work it that way, that's great. If you don't have a partner, I would recommend that you work it with somebody that you know is taking this midterm with you, because that's the best way to study. Anyway, Let's get down to it here. Let's get started. Uh, we're going to solve 5x minus 3 equals 4 times the quantity x plus 1. Well, 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 well. What do we do first? Well, first thing we do is we distribute that 4. So let's copy everything else down here and distribute that 4. 4 times x is 4x. 4 plus 1 is, f I'm sorry, 4 times a positive 1 is 4. Then the next step, let's uh, isolate the variable. We're going to subtract 4x from both sides. If you Here's a hint. If you, if you don't know where to start like this after you distribute, I mean, when you see parentheses, that should always be, oh, distribute right away. If you don't know where to go after that, this all looks like a big jumble. Remember, isolate the variable. And the way I do it is I look for the x term that's lowest. So this one, this has a 4x, that's lower than 5x's. So I'm going to subtract that from the other side. And that gives me just an x. Then I'll bring this down like that. This goes away. And then I have that equals this. Bring this down, and you've got 4. And now that's a lot simpler. Just add 3 to both sides. And then x equals 7. There's that. All right. Let's go to the next one. Let's solve this. Hmm, we got some negatives inside there, so let's keep those negative minus 4x. So 4 times a minus x is minus 4x. 4 times a minus 4 is, mi whoops, is minus 16. And that equals 7x. Uh, well, let's add 4x to both sides. That way we don't have this negative one over here. And minus 16 equals 11x. And then all we have to do is divide by that coefficient. And I'm just going to write it down here so we have room. x equals negative 16 elevenths. That's that answer right there. It's an ugly fraction, but sometimes it's got to be done. Last one on this page. Let's distribute that. Oh, this is an inequality. So there's one thing we need to watch out for. If we get to it, I'll let you know. But if not, then just don't worry about it. Uh, let's distribute 4 times x is 4x. 4 times a minus 2 is minus 8. And that's greater than 3 times x, which is 3x. And then 3 plus, uh, no, 3 times a positive 1 is 3. So that's plus 3. Uh, here's, the, here's the lower, or the, the, the least value x. So I'm going to subtract that from both sides. Oh, that doesn't, there we go, that cancels. This gives me an x minus 8 is greater than 3. Then I add 8 to both sides. Uh, what's going on here? I've lost use of my pen. What's going on? Ah, there it is, okay. Undo, undo, undo. Come on now. Okay. There we go. Uh, that cancels out, so I have x is greater than 11. All right, we didn't come across that thing that we had to remember, so we're good. we probably come across it here later. Let's keep on going. Oh, let's go to page two. All righty. Solve distribute this. Here's another inequality. We'll keep an eye out for it. We're going to distribute those two. So 3 times 6x, that's 18x. 
3 times a minus 2 is a minus 6, and all that is greater than 9 times 2x, that's another 18x. And then 9 times a positive is 5 is 45. Hmm, what do we see here? Some of you might have spotted this. Let's, let's isolate the variable. Subtract 18x from both sides, but uh, what happens there? Those cancel, so I'm left with minus 6 is greater than 45. Is this a true statement? This is not a true statement. This is a false statement. This is nonsense. So that means we have no solution. No solution to that one. It happens. All right, solve for y. Okay, we've got an x and a y here. So we want to isolate the y. We want to get it to where it says y equals whatever. All this, this, and that. That's all going to be on the other side. So we're just kind of rearranging everything so y is on one side. Rearranging. Okay, so we get y equals whatever else is over there. Okay, so let's start by subtracting 6x from both sides. So that goes away. Now I've got, I'm going to write it over here. 4y, write this down right here. And then uh, minus six a equals. I'm going to keep this on the left side of the right side of the equation. Uh, and then this plus eight. So I brought this over here. I brought that down here. All right. Now I just need to divide by this coefficient to get just a single y. So that gives me y equals. Uh, minus 6 over 4, that reduces to 3 over 2. So that's minus 3 over 2 times x. And then plus 8 over 4, that reduces to 2. So there's my equation. Look at that. That is in slope-intercept form. We went from standard form to slope-intercept form. Cool. Alrighty. Uh, Solve for w. Okay, well, we got a p and an l and a w in here. That's fine. This is what algebra is all about. Look at this over here. No numbers at all. Um, so solve for W. Okay, we want to get this all by itself. So I'm going to start by subtracting the thing that's next to it. So that goes away. I've got minus 2L plus P equals 2W. And then all I have to do is divide by that coefficient to give me just a single W. Let's see, this, oh, that cancels, but it's still negative, and this gives me one half, so I have P divided by 2 is one half of a P, and then this is, gives me a negative L, but this is positive, L is negative, and you can rewrite it this way if you want, Y equals one half P minus L, doesn't that look familiar, like maybe Y equals m x plus b but just with different letters something to think about okay here's uh the page three. Oh, here's another one solve for p so we want to solve for that we want to get that by itself well what's stuck to it an r and a t they're being multiplied that means p times r times t algebra is all about doing the opposite operation so to get rid of those things I'm going to divide by the things I don't want so these cancel divide by I'm going to do the other side as well so I equals R no, R I over RT equals P so there we go all right ah here's a domain and range question let's do brown that's pretty ugly determine the range of f of x, remember this is the name of the function, and this is the input. This means whatever is in here, you're going to plug into all the x's on this side and this side. Okay, and here's the domain, or the x's. So we're going to plug each one of these, the 0, the 1, the 2, and the 4, we're going to plug them in as an input and then do this to it 
can figure out what each one of the range is, we're going to write it down here. Remember, we put it like this. So each one of these is going to have an output. I'm going to put it in this machine. So f of 0, that's the first one. Let me get rid of all of this. f of 0, that's the first one, equals, instead of x, I'm putting using 0. So 0 minus 1. And it equals minus 1. So the first range element of the domain is minus 1. And then we'll do the next one. Uh, f of 1 equals, instead of x, we're using 1. So 1 minus 1 is 0. Okay, that's f of 1. All right, f of 2, now we're using 2 instead of x. 2 minus 1 is 1. There's the next range element. And then the last one, that was 2. The last one is 4. So 4 minus 1 equals 3. So that's the last range. Ooh, those look the same, don't they? There we go. So there's our range. Giving, given these domain elements, there's the range. Alrighty. How about silver? Gray. Uh, evaluate this for f of 3. So we're going to evaluate f of x equals x squared minus 4 for f of 3. This just means, that just means use 3 instead, instead, instead of x. That's all that means. So f of 3 equals 3, use parentheses, squared minus 4. Well, let's see. This sign doesn't change because we're just evaluating. This isn't a solve. This is evaluate. This just means simplify. This just means put the input put the input through the machine. That's all that means. Okay, so 3 squared is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. To square a number is just to multiply by itself. So 9 minus 4. So f of 3 equals 5. And you can write it like this, too. The x, y is 3, 5. All right. Let's go to the next page. Let's see how many pages are in this review. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pages. Okay, I'm going to make this into three videos, and I'll do about five pages each. So let's go to page four. All right, let's get a different color. No, we can put it over there. Let's get it that. Uh, determine the domain and range. Ah, domain and range of this graph. Okay, here's how you do this. First, this is, what type of data is this? This is continuous. It's a curve. So it's continuous. Remember, curve for, C for continuous is curve. Dots are discrete. Okay. So here with the domain and range, this is the Y axis and this is the X axis. So we're going to find the domain, which is the X and the range. And the domain, this is this axis going this way, back and forth. So I am going to find the boundaries, and I'm going to use a highlighter just for this. I'm going to find the boundaries of X, uh, the back and forth. So the lowest is right here. Ooh, that's awfully wide. Let's not do that. So wide. Let's... Okay. Uh, the boundaries are here. This is the lowest X going back and forth. This is the lowest value. And then over here is the highest value. That's where it ends. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is minus 8. Let's see if we could look like an 8. Minus 8. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is positive 6. So my x value, which is back and forth, and I'm going to erase these now so they don't confuse you. 
back and forth this way, it goes from a minus 8 to a 6. This curve, going back and forth this way, left and right, ranges, and I'm, and I just mean that, and that's where the distance is, that's where the area is, the, the place where it is, uh, from minus 8 to 6. So these are the numbers that you put there. You just copy those down. And if you remember, this is always less than. And since this is a, these are, you know, these are all dots. So we treat them as solid dots. So we it can include them. So if it's a solid line or a solid dot, like over here, see, this is a solid dot. And I just realized I'm working the wrong one, aren't I? <coughs> well, that's okay. You need to practice. We'll do that. <laughs> we'll do that in a minute. Uh, okay. So there's that range, and that there's the domain, and then the range. Well, we'll find the highest and the lowest. The highest is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Positive eight, and the lowest is one, two, three, four, five, six, six. So six is the lowest, and y is is in between there. So there's that. Okay. Okay. I'm coming. All right, here's domain and range. Same thing. This is going to be easy, as we just did it. So the on the x-axis, oh, and looky here. This is a solid dot, and this is a circle. So we can't include that one. So let's find out. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. This is five, and this is one, two, three, four, five. And this is a minus five. So the domain goes from minus five to five, X is in the middle. This is a circle, so this is just less than, but this is a filled in dot, so this is less than or equal to. All right, and then now we need to find the range. Do a light blue. So the lowest point is here, and the highest point is here. This is a positive three, four, five, six, and this is a seven. So the low value of the range is three and the high value is seven and this was the open circle so that goes with the three so that's just less than three and the other one is a filled in dot that goes with seven so that has the line underneath it there we go there's the range and domain for that graph Ooh, a word problem let's do this word problem let's pick a let's pick an orangey color all right the amount of honey in a hive which is F of B, made by colonies of B, B. <laughs> Clever. Uh, the amount of honey made by a colony of bees in one year is found using this function, F of B equals 60 times B. If there are no more than 500 bees, B, yes, we know bees are B. <laughs> Thank you. In a colony over course here, what is the domain and range of the function for this situation? Okay, let's rewrite this. Um, we have f of b, b is for bees, equals 60 b. The amount of honey. So the amount, uh, let's say it's ounces. Ounces. Uh... Because, well, anyway, that's, I just have to have that for my brain. Okay, so there's no more than 500 bees. It's the domain and range. Well, the, so B can be anywhere from, it has no more than 500 bees. I would say, um, well, there can be zero bees in a colony. They can all be gone. And then the greatest amount that we can have is, is 500. So here's what we do. First, we for the domain, we plug in 0, because that's the low end, and run it through the machine. So 60 times 0. This is f of 0. Equals 0. So the low end of the domain is 0. If there's no bees, then we have no honey. Remember? Always points to the less than. Okay, and then the last bit that we need is just that's the low end. See how much there is when there's 500 bees. So 60 times 500, that is 6 times 5, which is 30, plus all of these zeros. 1, 2, 3. 
So 30,000 ounces. That seems like a lot of honey. In a year, 30,000? Eh, I guess so. I don't know. Okay. Uh, oh, no. Look at me. I'm dumb. This is the range we gave the output. So here, look at this. Let's do this. Let's use magic. This is the range. Because that was the output, wasn't it? The output when the input was zero. Let's do this. When the input was zero, the output was zero. That's X, and this is Y. When the input was 500, the output was 30,000. Yeah, there you go. See, y'all are smarter than me. I know somebody caught that. Yeah, they gave us the inputs, the domain. They gave us the domain. It's no more than 500, so it's from zero to 500. That's what they gave us. All right, let's go to the next page, and that'll be the last one for this video. Uh, purple. All right, identify the domain and range of this graph, with the red dots. This is discrete. Discrete dots. All right, well, let's just label them. This one is one, two. This one is two, one. This one is two, and this one is two, five, one, two, three, four, five. And this one is one, two, three, one, two, three, four. This one is four, two. Alrighty, so the domain is just all the X's. So it's uh, going from left to right. It's one, across the left, one, two, Two's in there already. Two's in there already. Uh, and four. Okay. And now the range. There's all the Y's. So I'll start from the bottom and go up. So it's one. And then two and two. And then three. And then five. There's the domain and range. All you got to do is list the X's and Y's. All right, last one. Well, determine the graph below represents a function. Hmm, this is squiggly line. But we can use our vertical line test. And I will use this type of vertical line. So it's perfectly straight. I'll draw a bunch of them. Does that... Do any of these vertical lines... It's not so vertical. But do any of these vertical lines cross this graph twice no i say the nay i don't think so well those aren't so vertical but anyway yeah yep so it's a function so we can say yes he's a function all right there's five pages i will see you for the next one goodbye